Hey there, welcome to this new video. So now let's move to the simulation. Previously we addressed all the machines, so I hope to some extension at this point you master machine and you have seen how easy it is to create a mesh using our Dice Hut interface. So just to remind you that currently it's in beta phase, so you're invited to join and test it and break it. Uh, just log in and take some time just to see the technology behind and everything that we have uh, in the website. Uh, we have also a strong focus to win engineering applications, something like that. So later there will be a few videos just to show you that. So let's continue. Okay, so here I'm just in Firefox and let me chance to Microsoft Edge honestly have seen that it works. It's much faster, but it's up to you. Okay, in theory, any web decent web browser will work. I already checked and it worked even in Android. I don't see any reason why, why to use an Android, but you're missing some of the experience. Now you have a small screen, see so that you have a large you need a large screen here. But in any case, it works. So let's continue here and we want to move to the simulation phase. And this is the case I'm working with. Remember that we have our community tab here. So everything that you do, you can share it. Okay, I will show you a little bit to remind you how to do that. But the cases that I created previously, Okay, it has been shared here. So see that I have the mesh and also a previous simulation. So you can just duplicate this one if you have didn't have the mesh. Then you have some of the our templates and you go explore. There are also some projects you can look by users and so on. So let me go to my main tab, my main project. And this is the case that I want to enter. So from the previous uh, <clears throat> videos, Okay, we create, we were now the last one was the mesh interlude, then clean mesh and so on. So we want to create a new simulation, okay, from, from this mesh and this is what I'm going to show you, okay. So it's a brief introduction and later we go into details. Also to just to point out that this, this video is that <clears throat> you have been following, uh, these are single take, no editing video. So if I make errors, you will realize. The same for these videos and actually we have discovered many things while recording these videos so as you see more <clears throat> more errors or things that they are not performing as they should please let us know so basically let's say that we want to create an application and i will say that from this mesh okay the clean mesh be one the one that Great in previous videos. Let's say that I want to create a simulation. So there are two ways to do that. Let me show you those ways. So you know that this is a mesh and this, you double click there, you're going to enter into that mesh. Okay, you're going to see the latest state. By the way, just to remind you, if you want to share anything that you have done, you just click that share, publish, and then you can publish that to the community, okay? So this is what we have. And let's say that I want to look at the results and see that this is my coupling, very nice results. It's a decent mesh, you know, if you are a complete beginner, so you follow the steps, you will get something like this. It's a nice mesh, okay? So how to run a simulation on this. So this is ways that see here that when you do the mesh and you are satisfied, with what you have here, you have choose your next template. And remember that you also, you can download this case locally and run it locally, okay? So it's up to you. But here, we, let's just say on the cloud and use our interface. So you go here, choose next template and see that you have the option. So this is the most general one in theory here. You can access everything. It's a little bit tricky. So there will be some videos about that. So far, we're just exposing this to solvers in compressible and steady and steady. Later, we're going to go for the compressible BOF and so on. Okay. But just let's keep everything now uh, with no complications. Okay. I don't only want to, we don't want to add any other complications. So I will go for in the compressible steady state, just click there and that's all. Okay, so basically we're importing this mesh into this new template and we're ready to go. So see that we have it here. Okay, so what 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 the <clears throat> What the interface is just import the mesh, okay? And everything that you created previously, you have it here, okay? You don't need to click anymore here in import, okay? You can click also, there is another way. So you have your mesh locally in your hard drive or if you have it on the cloud, you just click there and you select your mesh. That is, we're going to see that later. Okay, so see that we import it and then we can 
do the setup. See that you have a name. Remember that you can change the name here. You have rename title, and also you just click here if you want to share the case, as I mentioned, just share whatever you're doing. So this is the first way. And as for meshing, remember that we have a vertical approach. We go from top to bottom to set up everything. Okay, but let's go back to my to my case, no, this this project. So I show you one way. So you enter into the mesh and then you import it. You choose next template. But also you can do like this. You create a template. Okay, previously we created a template for mesh, but now I want to create a new template for steady state. So create application. Okay, incompressible steady state. And it will create this is an empty, an empty uh an entity template. So see that you have the option import that you are going to import from the cloud. Upload is you have it locally in your in your hard drive. Okay, you can upload your case and everything will be prepared automatically. Okay, so you have a lot of flexibility. In our case, we want to use import for the cloud and just pick up your mesh. Okay, so in this case, let's say that okay, I don't recall. Just pick up one. Let me use this one. The interlude, no, and that's all. You have it there, and you can set up your case. Okay, see that is quite easy to uh, <clears throat> to to switch to the simulation. So see that you have it there. So it's creating some funky names, and then you can do the setup. So let me do something that you have here the right click. So here you have that right click experience in this you no know, project canvas. So right click, so you have different options. Okay, so let's say I want to delete this one, and also I want to delete this one and that's all you're done that is how you import the case now let's do the actual simulation so it will be up to you to pick up an approach how to set up the simulation i will do probably the one i like that i select the mesh and then i choose my new template no it's probably easy to identify which mesh is the one you you like so this is the one i want to use double click Okay, so here you have the whole workflow, and remember, it's a vertical workflow from top to bottom. Just follow the steps, and you're going to get a mesh at the end of the day. Okay, so results. I'm happy with my results here. I have everything, and just choose next template, and I want to run a steady state. So we're going to do the steady state. Then we change with transient, but nothing changes in transient. Just now you have. The time, choose your time step. So I have to say that it's better to use a steady state if the physics that you are solving now it is a physics that is not strongly on a steady. So probably later we, we need to talk about no a little bit those hypotheses because that steady state is a hypothesis and assumption that 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 we take to to run faster simulations. So see that we have our case here. You have you have here your ribbon here that is the standard one as for meshing all the auctions here also you objects view the same auctions that you have for meshing but now here you we have different steps as we're going to set up the simulation so okay so let me go here and see that you can click here and or you can click here to highlight different surfaces and you can get an idea you now that you can hide and hide change color and so on. So let's go here that we're happy we import the mesh. Okay, so so far here this is the names that we're getting from the previous step. And now here that we're in the simulation, we can change this name also. I will show you that. But the first step will be material. Okay, you need to select a working material. Okay, so here we have a, a very short database. Okay, so you can choose it or you can give here your kinematic viscosity. So remember that we are using uh, an incompressible solver, so we can use this dynamic similarity hypothesis. So it's up to you to pick out now the kinematic viscosity. So here the value that we have is the value that corresponds for actual dynamic viscosity and actual density of air. No, the actual density 1.225 and so on. But it's up to you to pick out these values. Okay, I'm not going into details in that. Also, you can choose different models. So we're working Newtonian. Then we move to turbulence. So choose your model. So see here that you know that in OpenFund there are many, many models here. We're exposing the most reliable models, but there is no problem to add all models you need. So I would go for the one I like, the K Omega 2006. If you want to change coefficients, you have it there. You can change it. Use the default values that usually are, are okay. And then we go to boundary conditions. So in boundary conditions here, see that you have each of the patches. So you click there and see that it's highlighted and that will be the AMET body. And at this point here, you have access and you can rename it. So I will call it AMET. 
then see that and it's a wall so see that select there a wall okay and we have here some default boundary conditions that you can you can change so zero grading usually is okay then velocity is not the slip okay and then we have the setup for the wall functions okay so we have some default values there which are okay and now we go for the rest okay so we have the back and there let me put there some symmetry okay kind of i want to close a close domain with no boundary layer there okay so i put that one let me put front also another symmetry there okay so in the inlet is this one here and it is a patch so you can change it accordingly to what what you would like to do okay so here we have the most basic boundary conditions so probably some of you might be interested in, in periodic boundary conditions so there's something that can be exposed but there's no problem for the moment we keep everything you know as uh, at the basic level so we go for pressure and remember that also this solver is incompressible so when you see pressure you, you have this kinematic pressure now is the pressure divided density and you have to be very careful about that okay then to 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 recover the, the correct results you need to multiply by density so when you were setting your material properties and you if you took the assumption that density is one okay there is no problem but in our case we are taking the density the assumption that density is 1.2225 so you will need to do that correction okay but that is not problems of DISO, that is a problem formulation in open phone, but you have to be very, very aware of, of that. You have to take care of that. Okay. Any solver will, <clears throat> if they are taking th those assumptions, you need to correct that. So I was here in boundary conditions. So let's say that in the inlet, I want here to set a pressure gradient. Okay. So, so far we have this default setup. <clears throat> But we are going to improve it, okay? This is kind of, we, we let it to the user, but we're going to give a, a default setup for uh, external aerodynamics, okay? But some of you may do internal, so things will be slightly different, but doesn't matter, okay? So see that I want the velocity here, so it is in the direction positive, and let's say that I want to put velocity 10 there, so you do your math and you're going to get your Reynolds number, it's up to you. Um, this is okay, then the, kinetic <coughs> energy okay uh omega and nodes we need to set up these variables that are related to the turbulence model so if you click here you're going to have a calculator and this is very handy just to make your life easier you put the velocity here they compute and then you have the values they're computing using a standard relations that you can find in the lit literature this is not nothing new so let's say that i want to apply it here okay in that one apply and that's all it will put those values automatically for you okay so let's say here that we have to reconnect to any fixed value fixed value okay and note okay it is calculated it's computed from that one we go now also it's computed from k and omega for our pretty much we take the same approach so total L pressure let me fix my pressure value usually it's recommended to fix the pressure value at the outlet then the velocity let's put an inhale outlet in case that we have flow coming back so leave it as it is this is the standard value so this is the one you can change it then we go for with the torrent variables so this same concept as previously you have here the calculator open you put a velocity there compute then we go okay ba -ba -ba -ba. sorry there i click here compute and then apply and you have it there Okay, so at this point, okay, dun, 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 everything is okay, here calculated. And this is it for this patch. Okay, so we have done so far, okay, upper wall, let me do also here a symmetry. So kind of I have my closed box there, so outlet, lower wall, okay, inlet, from back amet body this is the one that also we're using here our setup zero gradient velocity zero okay and the wall functions are enabled there and also we have the lower wall okay so recall that we put a boundary layer there so i want to have this also the boundary layer okay i could have used this approach you now there to put a symmetry or probably a moving wall to simulate that this thing is moving but for the moment i'm not going to do that 
So let me go here and to set up this wall, zero grading, no sleep, this is okay, this is okay, and okay. So and let's let's estimate this values there. So I put there. They still it. Okay, ay, ay, ay. Compute, apply, and there you go. You have your setup. And this is it. So feel free to revise everything. You click there, you can change the name. So instead of lower wall, let me call it round. And this is it. I'm done with boundary conditions. Now I move to initialization. And here you have two ways to do your initialization. So you can initialize from the poten using potential solver, or you can initialize in using information from a patch. So as you put inlet there, the information that you are given in the inlet is going to be initialized in the whole domain. It's a uniform initialization. And potential is, is more robust, honestly, uh, but only when you are using compressible solver. For compressible solvers, it's not valid anymore. It's not very robust. So for this case, let's say that I want to use potential flow is initialization. So be careful that if you want to use uniform, disable here. And if you want to use this one, it is enabled. Doesn't matter what you have here. And now we go to the solver settings. So probably this requires another video you know, to introduce you to the numerics, but take the default values that we're giving you here. Okay, this is a good numerics. Okay, so, but if you want, feel free just to adjust there according to what you would like to do. Okay, so also here we're enabling by default residual control. This means that the solver is going to stop when it reaches this tolerance. Okay, probably we need to add the option here, you know, to switch off this one so it will reach just the maximum number of iteration. Not a big deal. If you want to reach that number, just put here a, a very large number and that would fix, but will be better to have the option just to switch it off there. So now that you set you now your settings here, okay, so uh, we move, okay, from solver settings to numerics, and this is more than numerics, it's linear uh, the discretization, okay? So we have discretization here, we have you no know, linear solver settings, settings and also pressure velocity coupling here, the discretization of each term that is appearing in our uh, governing equation. So also here we're giving you the default options, robust options. So say that you have for the ver for velocity, okay, the convective nonlinear convective term. We're using linear wing very robust action. Then we have for the troubling quantities k and omega at wind. This is okay, okay. So remember that turbulence is a diffusive process. So as you use there at wind, then it's it's not a problem, but some people may may argue that it's not right, but it's up to you. What is important in CFD is that this variable, the con convective term, velocity convection, it has to be at least second order accurate. Then you have this auction here, so you enable this one, you have advanced auction, so if this is up to you, you want to go into more details, you can change. But where, as I said, we're giving you <clears throat> the most robust actions okay so this one this last one is related to the uh potential initialization the torrent quantities and so on okay so that being said okay we move to the next step so just to stress that vertical approach from top to bottom cell zones. We don't have cell zones in this case. Later, we're going to do a video with that. And here, we enable monitors. So by default, we didn't have no monitors there. We need to add there. So here, we're adding the most important monitors, but it, okay. But it's, you have the requirement for something else, let us know. But we think these are the most basic monitors that you, you will need when doing simulation. So for instance, very important one is I want forces. So I choose forces there. Where do I want to compute forces? So by default, it will compute in all walls, but I don't want to compute the forces in the ground. I just in the ambient body and that's all. You can enable, disable, and just to mention that you can change these parameters on the fly later, we're going to see. This is for moment, center of rotation, and so on. So let me add another monitor. So for instance, I want a monitor for Y plus, okay, so this is Y plus at the walls, okay, in every single wall you're going to see that one. Let me compute, for instance, also, uh, okay, the Q criterion also, you can put it there, Q criterion, you can get, you no know, remember methods conservative, so what is going in is going out, so you can choose here where you want, so inlet, and then let me add another in the outlet. Okay, so 
I should get something close to zero here. I have my y plus at the surfaces, then I have the q zero there, the q criterion, then I have forces. So I want you can compute force coefficients pretty much the same, but now you need to give you know, the, the quantities to normalize forces that you have it there. Not a big deal. I'm not going to put that one there. So if you want to cancel, click there. And this is it. You have your case there, and now you are ready to run. So at this point, okay, uh, for instance, you want to change the name of this one, just go there. So later I'm going to change it, but just to remind you that you have these ribbons here, you have more options there. Okay, kind of also some settings. So here we're not exposing uh, advanced auctions that in the previous, we want to take care about that because there are many auctions there. So we prefer just to hide that from from the user. Uh, then remember that these auctions, uh, later we're going to revisit this one, we can create some configurations. This is the files that so far you have there, so you can open and see how the case has been set up. And this is your journal script. So here you have not all the, the or our templates, okay? So here, if you want to change something, you can come here. So everything has been no parameterized there. So nothing to do here, by the way, just to show you, to remind you. Also important, you have the help button, okay? So you can click here, okay? So you have some help also here. Okay, you have some settings and somewhere here, also there is a help here. So you can click there and for each option that you're going, you can get some basics. So this is it. Okay, at this point, let's run. So see that we don't have anything here. If you want, feel free. So let's revisit this one. Import the mesh. Okay, you can import from the cloud or locally. Okay, this is from, from the cloud. This is locally. Materials. Select your material. Okay, so remember it's in compressible solver. So we can use the concept of dynamic similarity. So we can base everything in the kinematic viscosity. Choose your turbulence model. Okay, and remember that you have a turbulence model, we have new equations and we need to define boundary conditions, initial conditions for those new equations besides velocity and pressure. Now boundary conditions, just for each patch that you have here that we created, just select boundary conditions. So click in each one here, you have the pencil, you can rename scenes, okay? So that's all, we go here, initialization. Um, by the way, here also I haven't mentioned that you have here also you can do search, okay? So you can see what you want. For instance, you want to see only the symmetries, you can select there, so it's up to you, select everything, or you can search for name, because sometimes it might happen that, that you can have here many, many, many uh, different patches, so it can be a little bit tricky to find what you, you want. Okay, so you can do search there. You have it all around those searches. So we go initialization. We mentioned we can do uniform initialization or potential initialization. You can enable this, I will, that here. So if you switch it here on, it will do potential initialization. As you click here, disable, and it will do uniform. So for incompressible flows, it's strongly recommended to use the potential initialization. It works quite well. For external aerodynamics, then if you are doing pipes, internal flows, probably it doesn't give uh, very good results, but you can use it as well. Uh, solver settings, so this is your linear solver, so use the full option, but it's up to you to pick up a method. So this is linear solvers, tolerances, convergence criterion, and pressure velocity coupling. So see, uh, we, you can use consistent or the standard formulation of the simple method. Then numerics, choose your numeric. Each term appearing in the, in the governing equation should be discretized. So these are the basic methods that we expose there, the basic terms, okay? And we give this default value, but if you want to see everything, just click there and you will see all terms there. So you have gradients and everything. So as you see, we're giving you here very robust numerics. So now that we have this, we can move to the next step, sell some, there are no cell zones, nothing to do there. Monitors, we define our monitors. We're okay, and now we're ready to run. So at this point, we can choose the machine. I will go for this one, okay, four CPUs. Close. Here you can put run controls. And yes, I want to show you something that, let me put here, this value. Okay, so it will run 10,000 iterations, it will write the solution every 100 iterations, and also it will stop if it reaches this tolerance, okay? So you have all 
that logic there, standard logic, and then at this point just click run. By the way, you have more controls here, so you can choose, so later we're going to see how to do restarting of the solution and so on, okay? But you have these default options here, okay? So these are the basic there, so and click here, and now we're ready to run. Okay, so it's going to pin the machine and start to spin those those servers and let's see the solution okay so at this time i think depends now in the traffic that we have you know in, in this case i think we're running in amazon so it depends you now the workload there so let's wait a little bit Okay, so it seems that now we have the machine. So see that we're running live. Okay, no editing, single take. So let's wait. So it was, it took some time to get the machine. Now it's just deploying everything. Okay, so it's doing initialization, moving files, setting you know, the Jupyter Lab environment and so on. So downloading, moving data and so on. So at this point, see that you have the steps here. So now doing the composition and you can just visit each step there. So okay, so let's see that. Okay, we're moving there for course. Okay, renumber mesh. So it's also doing by default renumber mesh and also just to make more diagonal your matrices and so on. Then check mesh. Okay, you can see check mesh there your check mesh, your quality, we have it here, everything okay. So a little bit north orthogonality, a little bit high there, but it's not a problem. Your potential flow solution. And now it will start to run the simulation and this is it, it's running. And now you have your monitors automatically, you have all monitors, forces and so on, okay. So, so remember that it's conservative method, but it's going in, it's going out. So see that it, we have this one, Minus 80, that I think is the inlet, and then here we have the outlet, and everything perfect balance. We have the minimum, maximum, average, Y plus value in all walls. Okay, ground, okay, I'm at body, ground. Okay, we have the forces, moments, and coefficients, and our residuals. Okay, and this is it. The simulation is running, okay, perfectly. And what I wanted to show you here, so this is a standard, okay, running. By the way, here you have access to Jupyter Lab. So you see that as you open a terminal here, you can go to the actual directory. So now we're moving from the graphical interface and you can enter into your instance in Amazon and you can see all the files, how we set up everything. As you want to modify something, you can do it here or you can do it in the GUI, okay? so. Probably it might happen that you don't have access to something in the GUI, just come here and modify that. So for instance, you go into control and see that you have everything there. So it's up to you to modify something. So let me go here and put here another zero there, save that one. And that modification has been inserted there and no problem. Everything is running as it should be running. Okay. So, well, we missed that here, but somewhere here you will, you should have, you know, that that has been updated. Okay, so what I wanted to show you that you can change since here, you now what can be changed. Now, for instance, running, you cannot change boundary condition. You will need to stop it to do that. But let's say that talking about numerics, you can change it here. So for instance, let me put here five new orthogonal correctors. You put it there and now see that you have this button here, update. So previously see that we have two, one and two correctors. So if I click there, update, Okay, it will reread everything and see that you have it there, reread. And somewhere here, we have the five, okay? And that's it, okay? So usually I, re uh, I recommend you just to change uh, 
solver settings, pneumatics is the values that make sense. Okay, then if you want to change boundary conditions, you have to stop your simulation change and then restart. Materials also the same, okay? This is already part of, of OpenFone. Or I need to check actually it's open from 10. Everything here is based in 10 and open from 10. If you can change these values on the fly, I think you can change it. It's a word I feel what recall. So yeah. So let's do it. Let's do the test. Let me there. Okay. And update. Okay. I think, well, I don't recall, but uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, it's just rereading. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Yeah, I think it didn't read that a specific dictionary, but I have to check that in the wrong later. But in any case, this is just to show you how it's running. So I'll see that. Uh, let's look at our monitors and see that we're converging. Uh, we're having a very nice convergence. Okay, so it makes no sense to keep running at this point. The forces probably ever since see that is stabilized. So we can say that we have reached that very elusive steady state. No, not always you're going to find that steady state. But in this case, we have reached that elusive steady state. Okay, summary locks here. Uh, let me go solving. Okay, so at this point, you have two actions. You can wait until the end of the simulation, okay, or you can stop it. So, for instance, let me go here and let me put here 500, update. And now that I update it, it will stop at 500 or when it reached the tolerance that we said. So in this case, for instance, I can click a stop. If I want to stop and visualize my, my results, be careful that you need to click here, a stop and write results. Okay, this is the option that you need to click. And actually, let me update here. I want to say something else. You need to click here, stop and write. Okay, if you want to stop the simulation, but you don't want to, to conserve anything, you click here and it will, you are going to lose everything. Okay, be careful. Or probably you are not going to write that last step that would let you to restart the simulation. So here you have last step, so be careful about that. So I recommend you to click here if you want to stop something. Okay, and what I wanted to do that also here, since I'm running, and let me go to the Jupyter here and just to mention that, see that processor. Okay. So see that you have the solution is being safe according to the frequencies you enter into any folder. So here you, you, you <clears throat> it's like running locally in your computer. Okay. So it might become handy in some, in some situations, but recommend you just to stick to the, to the options that was poison here, but here you have everything there that you can get access. Okay. By the way, you also think I forgot to mention that is you change something here you need to update here. You need to click here to update, okay? You change something there, but it's not going to see immediately the modification you have done. You will need to click there to update the case. So let me check something cat constant because physical properties. Okay, I changed physical properties. So see that it changed it here, but it's not exposed in in Jupiter, uh, in Jupiter. So uh, we'll check that to see if it's possible also to, to expose it there, that modification. Okay. Or is the open phone Lexi? I don't recall well at this point, but I think for incompressible solvers, you can do it. Okay. We'll check that. Okay. So at this point, uh, let's do something that goes summary logs and let me go and would say a stop and write. I'm happy with this. Okay, so and see that it right, reconstruct the case, and then we can move to the post processing, the standard post processing. Okay, see here that you have the time, we run nine minutes. Okay, and you can get all your summaries, everything there. If you want to share your case, you have all the information there. Here, also, you can see all the files. You can access, get access to all the information, the standard. So later, we, I think we need to dedicate some time just to explain you a little bit these auctions here. We don't recommend you to, to modify scenes here. This is a little bit advanced. You can break scenes here if you modify. Okay. So wait for those new videos. So at this point, we're updating the case, uploading, and we can do the post processing. So remember that now that we have a solution, 
we have everything we can download the case locally or you can do it on the cloud okay so usually i have to say that i recommend to do it on the cloud is you have relatively small cases now stuff like two three four million cells okay you can do it in the cloud but if you have more than that it's better to download the case and do it locally of course if you have a good computer you know if you have a computer that is not very powerful with no graphical video card car probably stay on the cloud but it's better now to to do to do on the cloud only for cases no more probably than two millions okay so see that at this point we have our solution okay and you just can, can click show results or download results locally okay so you click here you download everything locally let me do it there and see that you are downloading the files and that's all and in my case i want to show results okay so show results and you're going to have access to your part of your interface and see here that you have a live formation you have this option to choose next temp next template and this is already pointing to you that you can do a restart so this solution you can link it to another solution so for instance you have the steady solution and you want to switch to the on a steady solution so basically just link it to the on a steady and you're going to get this last solution as a starting point from the other for the other one so later we're going to work on that so let's do the basic visualization okay so for instance uh let me go here i want to see just the amet body on the amet body i want to see for instance okay here i want to see velocity and you have it there below uh, sorry pressure then let me see the ground you have the ground there and if you plot velocity and uh, no pressure if you plot velocity in the ground you know that is zero because by definition we put it zero you can put whatever you want so let me put pressure also there you have your pressure fill now let me add a cut plane there put it there I want this specific cut plane and in that cut plane I would like to see velocity okay so I will show you just the basic stuff there and this is it it makes sense so far okay then remember you have more complex things so all the post processing now remember you need to select the, the the volume or the surface okay and then you can choose any of these options so you have cut planes uh, you have the clip filter pretty much like, like the cut plane but it will get also the volume in the other side of that cut, cut. then you have contours plots this is the one that we're going to use to these are isosurfaces basically it's string lines and those are the basic basic ones okay then we have some other options here you know this nice toolbox turbulence calculator that i show you you can measure things uh you can well projections here you have center of rotation show the center of rotation and something cool here that Talking about now the right click no experience in and die so so if you right click here is to change you will change the, the center of rotation okay so see that you right click here and change in there okay so it's up to you but then besides that is you right click you don't have anything even here you don't have the option for right click so probably this is something that we're going to add later no the right click experience but so far no everything that here you have you can click here no if you want to delete remove the filter change color and so on so the right click is not going to do anything okay also to remember to remind you that you can hide here or here you have the eyeball so usually you want to do multiple selections okay you select okay I go here multiple selections and if you want to hide and hide everything you do it here okay and ta -ta 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 -ta, let me go at my body ground and what i wanted to show you that i want to create the iso surfaces so the iso surfaces filters this one okay and i want to use q criterion i want to generate just one and you need to give a value so i know that this q criterion usually is a positive value and then kind of you need to to, to guess what is the value okay so let me put that value and there you go so i put 10 and capture this and yeah i'm happy with that i have my colors there so let me color that by velocity and i don't want to see any more this and there you go 
your eyes or surfaces okay your body and also well all your monitors information okay everything is, is safe here you can revisit here everything okay so all this is based in python okay and you can add your new pythons and so on python script and so on so at this point okay uh also you have more statistics more since here data view result files as within the mesh you can go here and you will see all the files so see that we just kept the the final step there okay and you have all the information in there uh high results okay so well yeah this is all for for this video okay yes i hope you got the main case but as you see it's relatively easy to set up the case very straightforward by giving you very robust options okay so thank you for your attention and see you next video bye